I said, do you know how many clients you'd have to get to make a million? He's like, absolutely. I was like, man, we get somewhere now. But as Stephen Hawking said, when you complain, nobody wants to help you. So what are you made of? What are you prepared to do? Are you holding on to something that won't help you to push the extra mile? That won't help you to push that extra rep that you need? Will you finish what you start? Or will you make excuses? See, when you go to a job and, and you already know how far you can go, you can already see that proverbial glass ceiling. Look, look, I want you to look at your goals. I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you know what it takes to make that happen? Like, do you, like, like, literally, like, because this is all it's going to take. Three things, it's all it's going to take. Do you know what it takes? And you guys have an advantage because you've been at this conference, I think, three days, you got a whole bunch of information. Look, the only thing it takes to go from where I went to, a homeless, high school dropout, sleeping in abandoned buildings, eating out of trash cans. I went from being a high school dropout, getting a GED to have a PhD. Listen to me, the only thing it takes is knowing what it takes. So one day I woke up and was like, okay, E, stop talking about what you don't have. You need to know what you don't know so you can get to where you're trying to get to. Listen to me, guys. I'm real simple. The first thing I'm going to ask you, do you know what it takes? That's it. There are many things in your life you have every reason to complain about. You have every reason to be upset by the things that have happened to you. The most sinister thing about excuses is they're valid. There's a million reasons why you should be able to give up. There's a million reasons why you shouldn't need to try that thing that broke you. You should be allowed to just sit on the ground and here's the thing, that's your right. You have every reason to do it. And maybe people won't even think less of you. But here's the truth. You either become weaker or stronger in the places that broke. And that's a choice of how you react moving forward. The great news is, the best thing that you could do to become stronger is love yourself. And as Kamal Ravi Khan said, loving yourself is a practice. People think that it's something that's going to feel right, that it's going to feel natural, that you're just going to turn inward and there it is, the spark of love and joy for yourself, inside yourself. And the truth is that's just not the human experience. It's not the way that it works. There's going to be a voice inside your head and it's going to blame you. Now, if you know what it takes, that's great. You mark it off. So, so now, you know, we're doing real estate. I'm doing solar. Like, I got a lot of stuff going on. And I remember before being in that room, with Warren Buffett, I never even thought about, I never even thought about making that kind of money. I never thought about making money, but I was sitting in the room with Warren Buffett, a friend of mine, Dan Gilbert, he invited me to the meeting. I'll never forget, he called me like, it was during December, like Christmas, this before Christmas. He called me, he's like, hey, what you doing tomorrow? I'm like, oh, what's going on? He's like, I've got Warren Buffett here and probably about 30 other guys. I'm like, what do you mean what's going on? You bring Warren Buffett to Dutch Boy. Like what would I, what what was I doing? You know what I'm like what was I doing that was that important that I'm not gonna be in the room with Warren Buffett? So I get in the room with Warren Buffett, and what blows my mind is that he's here. Look, I just unleashed all your dreams and goals. All your dreams and goals. I want look. There are those of you who watch people on TV, and you go, oh, and you admire them, and you love them, and some of you watch so much TV because you really want to live your dreams through somebody else. You're not ready. To it's going to say that it's your fault. And no matter how many times people on the outside tell you that that is not true, that this thing happened to you, that it isn't you, it doesn't define you, there will be a voice that's going to tell you that it does. And that's when you have to fall back on process. That's when you have to realize that you literally have to practice loving yourself and that it's okay that no matter what happened, there is absolutely nothing that invalidates that you're worthy of your own love. But you've got to practice it. You've got to be willing to do it. You've got to be willing to put in the reps. You've got to know that it's not going to feel right. But you've got to know on the other side of that is a vision of your life where you actually do love yourself. Because you took the time to say it. You took the time to practice it. You took the time to sit there and feel stupid and say that you love yourself. And sometimes just putting in the work is what you need to do to get strong. So put in the work.
What is it gonna take for you to wake up and realize that in this place there is no easy? Easy is not the way to go. You can't get strong being easy. You can't get faster being easy. You can't be the best makeup of yourself being easy. Easy won't pay your bills. You can't cast that check being easy. Hard work, determination is the key when you in this place of business. Are you truly ready to show up? Because if you're not ready, you came to the wrong place. Because in this place, See, when you're going someplace and you already know how much you're going to make, you already know how far you can go, you're in a dead-end position. It erodes your self-esteem. It lowers your sense of yourself. It creates an inner turmoil. It creates an emptiness in you. So I say that your life is worth finding what it is that you're supposed to do. And I'm not saying quit your job, I'm saying find it and do just a little bit of it. Just start working at it just a little bit, but do find out what your work is and hold on to it and don't let your dream go. Don't let it go. See, and here's a, something else I want you to begin to look at. Why is it that most people don't pursue their dreams or don't do better than what they're doing if they're capable of doing it? I think that many of us don't go the next step because we don't know what to do yet. And I say that, that the reason that we don't even explore the possibility of what to do is because subconsciously we don't believe that it can happen for us and we don't believe that we deserve it. Every individual has to get that blood pumped. Every individual has to go further than they've ever gone in their life. Because accountability must be attached to your purpose of why you showed up here. Ladies and gentlemen, this journey, this opportunity, the abilities that you possess, you got to wake them up again. The moment has come. It is time for you to show up. It is time for you to show up. And there will be obstacles that you must face. And for each obstacle, it will represent something about you. So here's what I'm suggesting. How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? In the last 90 days, how many books have you read? In the last year, what new skill or knowledge have you acquired? What kind of investment have you made in you? So I'm saying that as you begin to look at where you want to go, if you want to make it today, and things are changing so fast, you have to literally run to stand still. I'm saying that you've got to make some conscious effort to begin to work to develop you. Here's something else. Most people are not living their dreams because of fear, ladies and gentlemen. Fear, limited vision, and lack of self-esteem is what keeps most people doing things they don't want to do.